dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Victor Mature in Exchange Professor, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. And now here is your host, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and greetings from Hollywood. Welcome to your Theater of Stars, where all the foremost names of the cinema Join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star, making a return engagement to our microphone, is the very popular Victor Mature. Our story is a comedy romance called Exchange Professor. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here is Wendell Niles with an important message. Young man, be a volunteer. Your army and your air force urgently need men right away. Take advantage of the many choices of jobs now open to volunteers. If you are single and between the ages of 18 and 34, enlist right away. Get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. Serve yourself and your country. Be a volunteer. And now, back to your host, C.P. McGregor. The curtain rises on Act One of Exchange Professor, starring Victor Mature as Dr. Philip Clark. <laughs> At Gates College, seat of traditional learning in the sovereign state of Massachusetts, registration for the fall term was going on full fettle. On campus, there was a general air of excitement, gaiety, and anticipation. But in the private office of Owen Cartwright, president of the college, there was considerable tension. Tension occasioned by the presence of Dr. Philip Clark, the rather handsome young philosophy professor. Phil Clark was agitated. Yes, yes, that's the word. Sir, you'll forgive me, but this is positively outrageous. What is outrageous, Dr. Clark? This order of yours detaining me. I had a brainstorm. You certainly did. What? Sir. Ah, uh, that's better. You must never forget your place with your president, uh, Dr. Clark. Well, I will say you make it difficult. Oh, come now. Philip, if you'll excuse the colloquialism, just what are you beefing about? I'm beefing about the fact that I have to remain here three more days. Why are you in such a rush? I had it all planned out. The Queen Mary sails for England Friday. That would allow me three exciting days in New York City. But no, no, I'm stuck here. What's so fascinating about New York? New York has its fascinating aspects. Grant's tomb? Oh, no. <laughs> You're forgetting to laugh at the little jokes your president makes. <laughs> that better? Yes, your frame of mind, Philip. That almost constitutes a yuck. Yuck in radio parlance for a huge guffaw. But getting back to New York. Why such interest? Couldn't be a romance. Of course not. Oh, I was afraid of that. Foolish question. All I wanted was a couple of days to myself, away from academics and textbooks, to do, uh, well, I don't know what, ride the subway, eat in the automat. Yeah, maybe even visit Grant's tomb. Phil, you are manifesting tension. Loneliness. I am not, sir. All right, Phil. But let's look at things. What are you growling about? Look what you are. Exchange professor. Look what you've got. One year at the University of Bristol. The most sought-after exchange this year. Every person on the faculty wanted it. And you got it, especially chosen by the trustees. Now, why the sour grapes? Because you're keeping me here, that's why. All I want you to do is to orientate the exchangee from Bristol. But why must I do the orientation work? Just a courtesy, and because it works out. We matriculate earlier than they do. Great, great. You know, I could have insisted that you fly to England. There was provision for flying in the exchange. I could have kept you here a week. All right, I bow to the inevitable. Now you are manifesting intelligence, Philip, my boy. It's only a few more days. Besides, he's bound to be a nice chap. I've got his name here somewhere. Let's see. Yes, yes, here we are. Paul Wingate. Say, he's due to arrive at, on the 6.30 train. Yes, sir. Uh, Miss Beasley, check and see if the 6.30 train is on time, would you? Very good, sir. And find out what the television schedule shows tonight, will you? Yes, sir. 
Uh, no, Phil, you shouldn't mind giving us a mere three days. I believe I said I'm resigned to it. That's the spirit. Sir? You know, getting this exchange professorship hasn't hurt you a bit. You should have heard Governor Winton raving about you. We're indeed fortunate to have the governor as chairman of our trustees. And to think he almost went to Yale. I wish he had. Yes? The train's on time, sir. Uh, thank you. Oh, and sir, the television schedule shows book lore at 7, round table at 8, science forum at 9. Oh? No hoppy tonight? Tomorrow night. Oh, so it is. Uh, thank you, Miss Beasley. Get your hat, Philip. We've just time to get to the station. Goody. Philip, everything's going to be fine. Prexy always knows best. Yeah. Now, remember, Philip, you're going to extend every courtesy. Oh, I'll take care of the character. That's an abominable attitude. Say, I wonder where he is. Maybe he forgot to get on the boat in Bristol. Uh, I beg your pardon? Hmm? Yes. Uh, you seem to be looking for someone. Are you possibly from Gates College? We are. Yes, yes. Oh. Well, I'm Wingate. Wingate? Paula Wingate from Bristol. But you're wearing a dress. <laughs> Were you by chance expecting me uh, in muffler and greatcoat? Well, yes, I mean, we... Well, we were misinformed. Praxy, it's a girl. And a very lovely one, too. Uh, Miss Wingate, I, I... I trust it is Miss Wingate. That's right. I'm Dr. Clark. I'm exchanging with you. Well, I'm delighted to meet you, Dr. Clark. And this is President Cartwright of Gates College. How do you do, Miss Wingate? Oh, I'm overwhelmed, sir, that you would be so very generous as to come to the station to meet me. Why, it's an honor. You'll excuse the seeming confusion. We were expecting a man, weren't we, Prexy? Mm, uh, yes, yes. You see, your name came through as Paul Wingate. Well, that's strange. <laughs> well, I dare say, under the circumstances, you were amazed. Amazed is hardly the word for it, eh, Philip? Uh, what's that? Uh, Philip, quit staring at Miss Wingate and go arrange for her luggage. Oh, forgive me. Oh, I can do that. Oh, no, I'll be glad to. No, Here, no, I no, insist. Please, I'll I... only be well, a moment. Hubba, hubba. Does Prexy know best? Nonsense. You seem to be taken in by the landscape. Don't be absurd, sir. A uh, most attractive young lady. I should think you'd thank me for detaining you here and giving you the privilege of showing her the campus for a couple of days. I'm not interested in guided tours. I think I made that plain in your office earlier. However, I will be obedient and do my very best to familiarize the young lady with her duties. This is our campus, Professor Wingate. It's lovely. Across from you there is the fine arts building. Oh? Chemistry building to your left. Arts and science to your right. On this very spot here, General Howe drilled his troops during the Revolution. Looks like a splendid drill ground. But I'm afraid the good general did not drill his troops quite as much as he should have. <laughs> Maybe you're right. <laughs> if history is any indication. Oh, uh, Dr. Clark. Oh, hello, Quentin. My, it's a lovely day. Oh, oh, Professor Quentin, may I present Professor Wingate, University of Bristol, my exchange. How do you do, Professor Quentin? Oh, charmed, Professor Wingate, charmed, charmed. Careful, Quentin, you might blow a gasket. Oh, but I've been wanting to meet Professor Wingate. There have been some quite fabulous rumors concerning you, Professor Wingate, and I must say you confirm them all. Why, how kind of you. Oh, yes, you do. Has he shown you Quentin Hall, named after my grandfather? Professor Wingate, I think we should be going. We have considerable ground to cover. As you wish. Uh, I enjoyed meeting you, Professor Quentin. And I. <laughs> but, oh, look at this scent here, Bush. Just like a... Uh, hubba, Bristol. hubba. Not to you, Quentin. Oh, well, she is quite lovely. Every man to his own opinion. Oh, you're just grousing, Philip, because you're going to spend the year in England. <laughs> well, bon voyage, old chap. Happy landings. <laughs> We're now approaching the Student Union Building, Professor Wingate. Just call me Wingate, if you'd like. They all do at home. All right, Wingate. We are friends now, aren't we? Of course. Good. I do want to make friends quickly to, to fit in. But everyone seems to stop and stare wherever I go. So they do. But uh, I guess everyone will soon get to know you, Wingate. I hope so. This is the, the Student Union Building? Yes, where all the undergraduates hang out. I thought you might like a soap. Oh, how nice. Isn't it lovely here? So completely equipped. All the tables, the soda fountain, and the piano. 
Keep playing, Forsythe. Yes, sir. I'm a music lover, Forsythe, didn't you know? Yes, sir. Uh, what do the drinks be? Yikes. Hey, you must be the new prof from London. Just give us some drinks, Regan. Two chocolate sodas. Yes, sir. Hubba, hubba. I say, what is this hubba hubba I keep hearing? Oh, it's sort of an American slang of approval. <laughs> then maybe I'm doing okay, as you might say here in America. I'm afraid you're doing plenty okay, Wingate. Wingate, this is Philip. Yes, Philip. I wondered if you might like to drive up to the observatory tonight. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I, I have an engagement with Professor Quinton. Well, that should prove exciting. Well, I, I find Professor Quinton quite interesting. He's, his family's closely associated with the college here. Yes, and he'll be the first to tell you. Perhaps tomorrow night we could manage it. Oh, dear. Professor Quinton's also asked for that. Well. I, I'm terribly sorry. I suppose Quentin has also asked to see you the following night, my last night here? Oh, oh no, no, he, he hasn't. Then? That would be lovely. Oh, thanks, Wingate. You know, you'll like the observatory hill. I'll call for you at 8. one of the undergraduates. This is quite a popular place for the students, uh, I've been told. I can see why. A magnificent view, quite reminiscent of Brandon Hill in Bristol. Yeah? Well, tell me about it. Well, there's, there's not much to tell. You'll see it. it. It overlooks the city, and you can view the Avon and the Fram Rivers, the cathedral, all the history of the town laid out below. There was history written below us here. Yes? Yes, we're not too far from Concord. The Concord about which Emerson wrote. Spirit that made those spirits dare to die and leave their children free. Concord is now that part of the universe which dignifies men with freedom. And the spirit that made those spirits dare is needed now more than ever before. That was quite beautifully thought. Thanks. And spoken. You're very kind. Emerson's words. I don't know where he drew his inspiration. But I have only to look at your silhouette against the moon to know where I drew mine. I, uh, I think we should go now. Well, I, I bid you a very reluctant good night. Good night? I suppose goodbye would be more correct. You are leaving tomorrow, aren't you? Yes. I suppose I could fly to England instead of going by boat. That would give me a few more days here. Whatever you think, Philip. What do you think? I would like to see you, of course. Then I'll go by plane. And this isn't goodbye, but merely good night. Good night, Wingate. Good night, Philip. We pause briefly from our story, Exchange Professor, starring Victor Mature, to bring you an important message from our government. Attention, veterans. The U.S. Army and the U.S. Air Force have a special message for you. Former servicemen with military occupational specialties in radio, radar, electronics, and other critical categories who are interested in returning to active duty on a regular or reserve status are urged to find out about the special enlistment opportunities now available. Get full details about these opportunities today at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. The curtain rises on Act Two of Exchange Professor, starring Victor Mature as Dr. Philip Clark. Dr. Philip Clark, Exchange Professor to the University of Bristol, has managed to salvage a few precious days at Gates College in order to be near Paula Wingate, the British professor with whom he is exchanging. The days pass quickly. On the evening before his scheduled departure for England, Dr. Clark calls to pick up the lovely Miss Wingate. As he approaches her apartment, 
he bumps into an extremely irate Professor Quinton, who is going the other way. Well, Quinton? You. Is that a nice sort of greeting for a colleague? You're no colleague of mine. What's the matter? Did Wingate tell you she's going out with me tonight? Yes, she informed me. You've certainly monopolized her. When are you leaving for England? Tomorrow. Oh, thank heaven. You couldn't possibly make it tonight? And ruin Wingate's evening? Never. You're impossible. Good night. Good night, Quentin. Oh, hello, Philip. Come in. Thanks. May I say that you look enchanting? You're very kind. Or is there a better word? Um, did you see Professor Quinton? Yes, I ran into him. Mm. Roses again tonight from Quentin? Aren't they lovely? Yes, must be three dozen. All these flowers every night, Quentin is treating you like a chorus girl. Now, that isn't very kind. Professor Quentin has been most considerate, and, and I find his family quite fascinating. Oh. Why, did you know that Paul Revere stabled his horse with a great, great, great uncle of Professor Quentin's? Yes, and the stable boys used to look at Paul Revere's horse and Quentin's uncle and wonder which one to saddle. <laughs> Philip, that is not nice, and you know it. Seriously, I, I, I mean no res disrespect to the Quentins. They're, they're indeed a formidable clan in our state. I just wonder... What? Whether I should leave you to him for a year. He'll have you up to Boston, meeting them all. I just wonder what a poor, honest Ph.D. will have after leaving you to him and to them for a year. That's a year off, Philip. Let's get back to the present. Now. Tonight. Very well. What are we going to do? Why, I, I thought you had made the plans. So I did. Very elaborate they are. Tell me while I get my wrap. Why, I thought we'd have a nice, quiet dinner somewhere. Yes? Then drive up to the observatory. You couldn't have made better plans. <laughs> Philip, I think you should... Douse the light! See what I mean? Okay. You always forget. So I do. One thing, however, Wingate. Yes? I will not soon forget these few brief days that I've known you. Nor I, Philip. You know, I kicked like a Texas steer when President Cartwright insisted that I stay over a few days to welcome you to the campus. Of course, Prexy was expecting a man. I know. Just think what I would have missed had I gone. And I? Wingate... Do you mean that? Of course. Look, the, the moon has risen. I'm not interested in the moon. It, it's so beautiful. You're so beautiful. Please, Philip. Wingate, whether you know it or not, you've got a poor but honest PhD mad about you. Oh, Phil. Kiss me, Wingate. Wingate, I love you. I was praying for you to say that. Say it again. I love you. That will have to last for a whole year. I know. I mean, no, I, I won't go through with it. What are you talking I'm about? I'm not going to England. Phil, you're being insane. Your, your plane leaves in the not morning. Not with me on it. I'm not going to leave you here for a whole year. Where are you going now? I'm going to take you home, then I'm going to talk to Prexy. But there's so little time. I'm afraid it's impossible. Nothing's impossible, Wingate, to a man in love. <laughs> Forgive me, Mrs. Cartwright, for calling at this late hour, but I must see the president. Well, this is the worst time you could call. Oh, here he comes now. You'll excuse me. What in the world do you mean calling on me at this hour? Why, it's 9.15. Oh, forgive me, Prexy. I can't forgive you. I was watching Hoppy. Most fascinating episode so far. The villain had him clinging to a rock by his fingertips over a chasm 10,000 feet deep. And with a leer on his face, he was about to squirt lubricating oil into Hoppy's fingers. Prexy, this is a very vital matter. I thought you sailed for England two days ago. Well, no. First, I decided to fly, and just tonight I decided I'm not going. Come again? I said I'm not going. Are you out of your mind? Why? Because I'm in love with Paula Wingate. You are out of your mind. I mean, it happened so quickly. You're telling me. Well, I'm delighted for you. Then you will send an alternate. Impossible. Prexy, nothing is impossible to a man in this love This because... is impossible, and I refuse to discuss it further. It would mean getting the approval of Governor Winton, the head of our trustees. There's the relationship of the two schools involved, and it's absurd to try anything so fantastic at such a late hour. But look, if Besides, you... Besides, like, now... a year's wait will do you good. 
You're so impetuous, Philip. Please, Plexi, look. The matter is closed. Good night, Phil. Dear, is the commercial over yet? Has he started to squirt the oil? <laughs> Nothing is impossible, Wingate, except getting somebody on that plane in my place. President Cartwright said no, didn't he? Yeah, in capital letters. I knew he would. Oh, maybe he's right. It would necessitate the approval of Governor Winton. It's very late to be making changes. Still, I thought Prexy just might go to bat for I me. I will never understand how the president could have expected a man, especially since I sent my picture. Just a minute. Do you mean you sent a picture of yourself? Well, it's a requirement of the exchange. Didn't you send a picture? So help me, I did. Well, excuse me. I'm going to have words with Prexy Cartwright. Wait, Philip. A great matchmaker. This Dan Cupid masquerading as a college president is going to get me out of the exchange. Well, I... Uh... Didn't Wingate send you her picture? Didn't she? Well, I... Uh... Didn't you plan the whole thing? Why, no, I... Uh... Oh, trap. Yeah, you certainly are, and you're going to call Governor Winton right now. Why, it's nearly 2 a.m. No one ever calls him at this late hour, even to tell him he's been re-elected. Come on, come on. Start putting the call through. I'll get on the other line. Well, prepare yourself for an explosion. Ah, I can't understand it. Calling at this hour to make this last-minute change? But we should send an alternate, Governor. Why should we? Because Philip, that is, Dr. Clark, has been conducting a serious experiment here at the college. I want to keep him here. Well, is Clark there? Yes, sir. I'm on another line, Governor. So, you've been conducting an experiment? Yes, sir. Of what nature? It's an important experiment in human relationships. Been working hard? Oh, I've done considerable night work, sir. Does it look promising to you? Highly promising, sir, if I could but continue it. Well, Patsy, who are we going to send? Who are we going to send, Philip? Why, the second high man. Uh, why, uh, we can send Professor Quentin, Governor. Quentin? Yes. Well, it's a shame to do that to the University of Bristol, but perhaps the circumstances allow it. You have my approval for the change. Well, thank you, Governor. Now, now. all we've got to do is convince Quentin. <laughs> Come right into my study, Quentin. Uh, why, you, you certainly must have something important to discuss, getting me out of bed at 5 a.m. Well, you might want to get ready for a quick trip after the good news I'm about to spring on you. Take a trip? Uh, I don't want to go anywhere. Hello, Quentin. What are you doing here? Oh, hasn't Prexy told you? I'm bowing out. I'm going to let you have the exchange professorship to the University of Bristol. I just obtained the governor's approval. Oh, no, you don't. No? No. Philip just wants to get me out of the way so he can have the field with Paula Wingate all to himself. Is that bad? It so happens, Prexy. I have decided that with careful training, Paula Wingate might be suitable to darn my socks. Oh, no. To carry on in the Quentin tradition. Well, for heaven's sakes. Now things are in a stew. I wish there was someone here who would show some loyalty towards this college. Excuse me, Philip. There is someone here who wants to see you. Coming. Excuse me a minute, Prexy. And are you bottleneck? Bounder. Oh, Philip. Paula. Philip, I had to rush over to tell you. I, I tried to call you, but the phone was busy. We've just had a long talk with Governor Whitten. Philip, I didn't tell you, but tonight... After it seemed hopeless for you to stay here, I cabled the university to see if it wouldn't be possible to send an alternate to take my place. Yes. So that I could be in Bristol with you. Well, I got my answer. And the university has accepted the proposal. Wonderful, Paula. I merely have to pay for my alternate's passage and, of course, remain here until he arrives. Oh, darling, I, I knew we were winners from the beginning. Kiss me. Yes, Philip. Now, excuse me just a minute. I've got to say something to them inside Gentlemen, magna est veritas et priwalibit. Truth is mighty and will prevail. I succumb to the honor of the college and the integrity of love. I'm going to Bristol. The curtain falls in the final act of exchange professor... Our star, Victor Mature, will return for a curtain call after this timely message from Wendell Niles. 
Young man, volunteer today for enlistment in the U.S. Army or the U.S. Air Force. The Army and the Air Force wish to meet their manpower requirements with the greatest possible number of volunteers. Hundreds of jobs in a wide variety of career fields in both the Army and Air Force are open to volunteers who can qualify. If you are single and between the ages of 18 and 34, get full details at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station today. Now, back to our star and your host, C.P. McGregor. Vic, I just saw your new 20th Century Fox picture, Stella, with Ann Sheridan. Well, did you like it? I certainly did. And something else, I think all your fans are going to like the new Victor Mature. The press is going to have to dig up a new tag to substitute for that hunk of man they hung on you. Maybe something more in the romantic department. Well, that's kind of their problem. My problem is I'm in a romantic slump right now. How's that? Well, when I first came out here, they had my motion picture romance mixed in with wrestling a dinosaur. Yes, I remember. That was in one million B.C. That's right. Then in Samson's Lila, my romance wound up with me wrestling a lion. And in my last picture, I wrestled and shared. <laughs> you call that a romantic slump? No. <laughs> See, Pete, what I call a slump is that there was no catch to it. Why I didn't even have a jawbone of an ass. <laughs> <laughs> oh, say, C.P., by the way, I remember that this broadcast goes overseas through AFRS, and I'd like to tell the boys that my old uniform still fits, and they'll know what I mean. I'm sure they will. Incidentally, Vic, we're going to have a fine star coming next week, Brenda Marshall. <whistles> say, she's great. So is her husband, Bill Holden. What's the story about? Well, Victor and ladies and gentlemen, Brenda Marshall will star in an action drama called The Gold Digger and the Miner. This is the story of the West and the never-ending search for gold. A girl graduate mining engineer, desperate for a job, takes over a geology assignment to relocate a lost vein. She not only rediscovers gold, but a plot involving theft and murder, and learns that the bottom of a mine shaft is no place for an ambitious girl engineer when a potential murderer is at the controls of the elevator. That's one I won't miss. Well, so long, C.P., and thanks for inviting me over again. Goodbye, Vic, and thanks for joining us. Be sure to listen next week, ladies and gentlemen, when Brenda Marshall joins us to star in an exciting story, The Gold Digger and the Miner. The next week, then, this is C.P. McGregor saying thanks for listening and cheerio from Hollywood. <laughs> courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Rich Hall, with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking. <laughs>